church. How are you doing today? Who is ready to worship God this morning? Let's stand up your feet. Let's lift the name of Jesus today. Come on.
welcome them to this place today. Come on.
remind you this morning, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Oh God, there is nothing you can't do. So we put our trust in you today, Jesus. We put our faith in you this morning. No matter what we are facing today, no matter what is the situation in our lives today, in our families today, we put our trust in you today, Jesus. You are the firm foundation. You are our hope, Jesus. hearts to him today. with us today here in person and online. My name is Kelly Haran. I'm the outreach director here. And we just want to welcome you. Welcome to Grace Community Church. Welcome to worship with us. Thank you so much. If this is your first time here, if you haven't been here in a while, we want to just make sure that you feel like you are home. We want to thank you. Hey, Ben, can you give us some keys a little bit while I'm doing some intro and some announcements? That would be great. We'd love to have some music up here. 
Thank you so much. Um, not to put you on the spot or anything. It's just great things. Just play some of the Yeshua. It's so great. I love it. Um, so uh, we would love to have you just to, uh, to check in with us. And we have our QR on the screen and also on the back of the chair. So get your phones out, um, especially if you haven't been here in a while. We want to check in with you and we want you to check in with us just to let us know how you're feeling, how you're doing. If there's anything that we can do for you, let us know how to pray for you. That's one of the best things that we want to do for you. And also how you can connect um, with us and what, how we can connect with you. We have so much happening here starting up. I don't know if, uh, if you are, are like me, it's the end of the school year and it seems like this is a really busy time as we finish the school year, as we go into the summer. And we have a lot happening here on campus as well and uh, as we gear up for the summer too. And so one of the things, uh, events that we are having coming up is a family movie night, which is I'm super excited about. And whether you have young children, uh, older children, whether your children are off and grown, you are welcome to come to our family, uh, family movie night. I was just talking to some adults, and you can put that on the screen. I was just talking to some adults yesterday, and they were like, that sounds like fun. Uh, can we come? We don't have any children that are in our house right now, and I, they're off in college. I was like, come on. It's a great time for f uh, fellowship. So you can go ahead and, and register um, and just come. We have fun and fellowship. There's a movie playing, and we love to just chat and, and uh, hang out during this time, and it's this coming weekend. So we hope to see you guys there. Um, you know, bring a chair, bring a thing to sit on the floor, whatever whatever makes you comfortable. And um, we just can't wait to have fellowship with you as we enjoy a movie and just fun. Uh, also coming up is Vacation Bible School. And this is filling up fast. And so if you have not registered your children, you want to make sure you register your children. In addition to that, we are in need of some volunteers. And so if you have not volunteered for Vacation Bible School and you have some time to do so, I really encourage you, I really encourage you to just step out of your comfort zone. You never know what God is going to do when you just step out of your box. He is going to bless you first and foremost. And he is going to open doors and open your heart more than you will ever imagine. I uh, started working with the Praise Kids Choir a couple years ago, and many of you guys know I'm a high school teacher. Little kids, not my thing. My children, they're my thing. But the little, little elementary children, that's not my forte. And I started working with Vacation Bible School singing and, and doing that and, uh, and and it was weird because they would come up and they would give me hugs and I work with high school kids and we're not allowed to like give them hugs um, and the little children would come up and hug me and at first it was kind of an odd feeling for me and then God pushed me to work with the praise kids and put on my heart and I've had conversations with people before how it's out of my comfort zone and they're like really you're so good with them and I'm like you have no idea how long that 30 minutes is for me. It's like five hours. But I love it so much. And the joy on their faces. And when they come and sing and when they give me that hug, I hug them right back. And it puts me out of my comfort zone each and every week. Each and every week. But the joy and the blessings that I get from that and it's something that I would never have thought that I would be doing. Because again, high school is my thing. But now that is my thing. Because God pushed me there. So open up your hearts. Volunteer. And I have a slide. Volunteer there. Volunteer for VBS. Volunteer to work in Grace Kids. Volunteer to be a greeter. Volunteer to help set up the chairs. Or to break down the chairs or to help in the production team or the creative team. We have so many places that are in need. And we have the same group of people who are stepping up each and every Sunday or each and every time we have a big event. It's your turn. It's your turn to help step out of that box. Just takes one. 
bring a friend. It's better to volunteer with friends. It's more fun too. I'm gonna call the ushers forward. And at this time, we're gonna take our offering. And part of that offering, giving from our heart, giving back what God has blessed us with, giving back that 10% that God has given us financially. And that goes back to what we are doing here at Grace Community Church through Vacation Bible School, through all of our programs. God is blessing Grace. He is blessing us by having these children who are gonna sing in just a minute. He is blessing our programs here. He is blessing the growth of our church into the community. And he will bless each and every one of you as well. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for these blessings, God. Thank you for what you are doing here at Grace. God, thank you that we can listen to you. Lord, when you give us that nudge to volunteer, when you give us that should I, shouldn't I, help us to listen to you, God. Help us to step out of that box, to embrace that nudge from you, God, to serve you, to further your kingdom, God to further your kingdom financially, God, to further your kingdom with our talents, with our time, God. And we thank you so much for what you are going to do, God. You help those seeds that have been planted to grow. Only you can do that. Thank you so much, God. We love you and we praise you. In your name we pray, amen. Let's watch the video as we give. to that. The world is thirsty for that kind of love. May we love like Jesus. Enough said right there. Good morning, everybody. So good to see you and uh, so glad to welcome every single one of you. Uh, those who are here all the time and those who are here maybe for the first time, chair of families, preschool families, uh, so glad that every single one of you are here today. Some of you I'm sure are here and you are in the middle of an awesome, awesome weekend. And uh, we're excited for you, and we pray that this time together might help that weekend become even more awesome as uh, we're turning the corner, wrapping up the weekend. But some of you, anytime there's this many people in a room, I know everybody's not having an awesome weekend. And some of you might be having a direct, complete opposite of awesome weekend. You might be having an altogether awful weekend. And you know what? We're glad you're here, whether it's an awesome weekend for you or an awful weekend for you. And here's the thing. This is what we believe about worship and what we believe about the God we know and serve and love is that he meets us wherever we are. He meets us in the awesome and he meets us in the awful. Uh, he intended for you to be here today, and we're so glad that you are, every single one of you. And uh, it's our prayer that, that you will experience God coming alongside of you 
if you're having an awesome weekend, awesome day, uh, if you have just felt like you've had an awesome life, that you know God is making it even more awesome. But if you're here today and you've had an awful weekend or maybe just an awful morning for whatever reason, we want you to experience God coming alongside you in the awful too to make it better. Uh, that's our prayer and that's our hope. Uh, God meets us where we are and he takes us where he intends for us to be. And the place where he always intends for us to be is closer to him. If you're already close to him, he wants to take you closer to him. If you feel like you're far from him, he wants to bring you near to him. And so we just hope that everybody here is open to the work of God at work in our life together and in each of our individual and personal lives. So we're so glad you're here. If any of you have questions about the church, uh, just track me down at some point today or in the days ahead. I would love to answer whatever questions you might have. If you've been here at Grace a while, um, you've heard me talk about our dogs, our Whitener dogs in the family. And I've shown a couple of pictures, maybe some, some videos through the years uh, of our dogs, Chip and Buddy. So Chip is the older and the larger of the two dogs. They're both small, but he's probably this size. And Buddy's about half his size. So about this size, a little ball full of joy. Um, and he's a little younger. So I've got a picture, a couple of pictures of little Buddy. All right, that's little Buddy. Oh, this is a cute little thing, right? Uh, and let's see the next picture. So this is Buddy in either Christy or Sarah's lap. I think we have two pictures. Maybe, Maybe not. No worries. If not, there he is. That's his little Buddy. Uh, so right, it's just cute as cute can be. I'm telling you, that's the, the sweet little um, angel dog right there. But watch out, I'm telling you, because a sweet little angel dog in a literal blink of an eye can go to like devil dog, you know, like just vicious, mean devil dog. I'll be rubbing his belly and all's good. He loves me to pieces. And then I pull my hand away and it goes on the attack immediately. So I actually have a little video clip from less than 24 hours ago. Just yesterday, uh, we, I went in for the rub and you'll see what happens. Go figure. I cannot figure that dog out. But hey, he can attack me as much as he wants to. I love that little dog so much. We all do. Uh, cute as cute can be. Now, let me ask you this. Does anybody have a dog like that? Anybody else have a dog like that? Is it a few hands going up? Okay. How about this? Does anybody have a person like that? Okay. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. You're thinking, yeah, that person. There's nobody over there, by the way. That person him, her, them, but what happens? Look, maybe you've heard this said, when I'm pointing my finger at somebody, how many fingers are pointing back at myself? Three. Three fingers pointing right back at me, right? So often we're the ones also who fall very short in all that. And sadly, so often the ones who see that, who see that kind of angel version of me and the devil version of me, the sweet version and the not so sweet version are the ones in the house, the one so close to home is the, is the husband or wife, if we're married, the kids, if we have kids, the parents, the siblings, the, the family so often uh, sees that side. So I love so much what the Word of God says right here in Psalm 101. Let's put this up on the screen. I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. Man, that's good. Just stop and think about that. I will walk with integrity of heart within my house with integrity of heart, with integrity of mind, with integrity of life, with integrity of everything within my house, with my wife, with my kids, with my family, my parents, my siblings, everyone in my home. I want to walk with integrity. I want to walk the walk with integrity instead of just talking the talk with hypocrisy. Now you think about the difference it would make. If every single person in your home, everyone in your house was walking with integrity of heart, yourself included, if every single one, instead of talking the talk with hypocrisy, walking the walk with integrity, it makes such an impact, such a difference. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. We're in a series on relationships, and we started a series last week by talking about the relationship at the heart, soul, and center of all relationships that we have as believers. And that's the relationship that we have with God the Father through Jesus' Son, the Holy Spirit in us and with us. That's the foundation of all relationships for believers. And today we're talking about the marriage relationship. 
relationship, all right, the marriage relationship that God has designed and defined to be such an incredible lifelong blessing for a husband and for a wife. And yet so often, sadly, because of our own sinfulness, the sinfulness of mankind, our own selfishness, our stubbornness, what God intends as a blessing is so often turned into a battlefield. Man, and we want... We want more families, more couples, more marriages in the Grace Church to experience more of the blessing and less of the battlefield, less of the battlefield and so much more of the blessing. And so we're going to look at some words from um, the Word of God in James today. This is a, a book in the New Testament. And if you're married, if you're here today and if you're married, I want you to listen for the wisdom Uh, for your relationship, your marriage relationship from these words. But if you're not married, and a lot of you aren't married here today, I want you to listen for wisdom that touches on any and all relationships because James was not written just for married couples. Just to be clear, it's not a wedding manual. It's not a marriage manual. It's, It's a manual for life, Christian life, including relationships that uh, among which are marriage relationships. So listen for wisdom for any and all relationships in what we read today. So I'm going to read from James chapter 1, uh, starting with verse 19. And James says this, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, okay? Quick to hear, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For That's talking to talk with hypocrisy right there. We want to walk the walk with integrity. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, he goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, a doer who does, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, that's important, bridle his tongue, we'll come back to that, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. That's good right there. That line from Psalm 101, I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. You want to know what that looks like? What that looks like is following that teaching right there from James. Following that teaching and all the thoughts that we think and all the words that we speak and the discussions that we have and the differences and the disagreements between us and others and the decisions that we face and that we make. Basically, James is saying, don't be like that little dog. Don't be like the vicious side of that little dog. Be quick to listen, be quick to hear, be slow to speak, be slow to anger, bridle the tongue, tame the tongue. In other words, guard yourself, hold off when you're tempted to let it rip, to let loose and let it rip on a reckless rampage. So husbands in the room and wives in the room and anybody and everybody in the room, how we doing with this? How, how we doing with that? With the quick to listen guidance with a quick to hear with a slow to speak slow to anger bridle the tongue tame the tongue could anybody do better every single one right we all fall so far short if we're honest with ourselves we put our finger at somebody else three fingers coming right back at me we all could do better and so we're going to go through uh, some points from what we just read. First, be quick to listen. Think about this, a quick listener. Now, everybody in the room knows people that are quick talkers, right? Anybody know some quick talkers in the room? Yeah. What do we say about them? They talk a mile a minute, right? Somebody talks a mile a minute, a quick talker. Have you ever heard somebody described as a person who listens a mile a minute? No, right? And more often, someone is quick to speak than being quick to listen. James says, be quick to listen. There was a story about a husband and wife that were sitting down one morning. The day was getting started, and the husband was kind of scrolling his phone through the news, and he came across this story about this study that was done years ago. Maybe you've heard about this study that determined um, the average number of words that's used by a typical man on a typical day. Anybody anybody heard this study? 
and, and also determine the average number of words a typical woman uses in a typical day. And so this guy came across this article. He was so excited to prove his point to his wife that what he said was true, that, he, that she talked too much. And so he, he said, hey, get this, honey. He said, this study says that the average man uses 10,000 words a day. Okay, well, how about, how about this, though? The average woman uses three times as many, 30,000 words a day. Well, man, she was quick, though. She shot right back. She said, that's only because the, the wives have to repeat everything we say three times to you husbands. <laughs> oh, you're feeling it, right? And the husband's sitting there scrolling through the phone. He's like, can you repeat that? What'd you say, huh? What? <laughs> exactly. Prove the point. Classic. But I have that experience. That's happened maybe once or twice in, in my marriage. <laughs> right, right, sir? Once or twice per day in our, in our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. Um, so be, be quick to listen, quick to hear. And I want to add to that, be quick to listen, hear, and understand. Doesn't mean we're always going to agree. Uh, we're going to do our best to do our part to hear, and not just to hear, but to listen, and not just to listen, but to understand, mutual understanding. If you've ever been heard, if you've ever had somebody listen to you, and not just heard with one ear, uh, with, with it going in one ear and out the other, but to understand, it makes a difference. It really matters. Listen to, and hear, and hear to understand. And then James says, be slow to speak. Be slow to speak, especially when what's about to come out of your mouth is harsh, or when what's about to come out of your mouth is hurtful or hateful. Think about this. Ask yourself this. Can I go 24 hours without saying a single uh, unkind word to my spouse? Or can I go 24 hours without saying a, a single unkind word about my spouse? And if you're not married, think about it with anybody else you know. Can I go 24 hours without saying an unkind word to or about that person? And you want to think about next level? Can you go 24 hours? Can I go 24 hours without thinking an unkind thought about them? Man, that's, that's hard, right? When you stop and think about it, 24 hours without not only saying an unkind word to or about somebody, but thinking an unkind thought about someone. Now, so here's the thing. If someone uses substances, right? If they smoke, if they drink drugs, whatever, if, if they can't go 24 hours without that particular substance, a lot of times somebody's gonna say they're addicted to that substance, whatever it is, right? And so if I can't go 24 hours without using an unkind word or thinking an unkind thought, we may, you may as well say I'm addicted to unkindness. I'm addicted to unkind words. I've lost control of the tongue. And that's why James says, bridle it. Bridle that bad boy. Bridle the tongue. Tame the tongue. James chapter 3 says so much about taming the tongue, which James says is a, a restless evil full of deadly poison. That's what James says about the tongue. Read chapter 3. It's good. That is some good teaching in there. Be slow to speak. Bridle the tongue. Tame the tongue, slow to speak, which leads to the next point that James brings, be slow to anger. Be slow to anger. Notice James doesn't say, do not get angry. He doesn't say, do not be angry. He says, be slow to anger. It's similar to elsewhere in the New Testament. In Ephesians it says, be angry, but do not sin. So be angry, but do not sin. And so what's getting at here is a difference between what we would call reckless anger and righteous anger. Wrong anger and right anger, right? Reckless and righteous, wrong and right. So the reckless anger, that is the short fuse, temper flaring, pots and pans throwing, door slamming, like rampage of rage, like the little dog when it gets set off. That's reckless anger. And righteous anger is the opposite. Right, righteous anger is right anger that's aimed at something that's very, very wrong. It's, it's right anger aimed at something that is truly wrong, but it's not exploding in that rampage like reckless anger. Righteous anger, reckless anger. I mean, we all get angry. It's, it's easy to do that, but what's not easy is to be angry with the right person at the right time in the right way for the right reason in the right amount. That's hard, right? That's not easy at all. It's really, really hard. But that's what James is getting at when he says, uh, uh, be slow to anger. Quick to listen, quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, bridle the tongue, tame the tongue. It's all James' way of highlighting the main point of what we read today, 
which also is the main point of the whole book of James, and that is this. Let's put it up here on the screen. Be doers of the word and not only hearers. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers. Hear and believe the word of God. Hear and believe what the word of God says. What the word of God says about relationships, what the word of God says about marriage, what the word of God says about anything and everything. Hear and believe what the word of God says, but don't just hear it and don't just believe it or say you believe it, actually live it. Don't just hear it, say you believe it, actually do it. Don't just talk the talk, also actually walk the walk. That's the, that is the dividing line right there. What we say earlier, I will walk the walk with integrity of heart within my house. Don't just talk the talk with hypocrisy in your heart within your house. Walk the walk with integrity within your house and also beyond your house. Belief lived out as behavior. It's thinking, it's speaking, it's acting, it's living, it's loving outside and beyond myself for the good of my wife. For the good of my kids, my parents, my siblings, those in my house, and then beyond my house, wherever the Lord places and plants me. That's the blessing that God intends for relationships. All relationships are opportunities for us to think, speak, act, live, and love outside and beyond ourselves as God has modeled for us in Jesus. That's the gift of relationships and certainly the gift of the marriage relationship. That's how marriage becomes more of the blessing and less of the battlefield, less of the battlefield and more of the blessing. Uh, There's a book in the Bible toward the middle of the Bible called Song of Solomon. And it highlights just the gift and the blessing of marriage as a reflection, really a reflection of the far greater, far deeper uh, self-giving and sacrificial love that God's given, that God's shown, and that God's offered us in Jesus. So this is the climax. I'm going to read the climax of the Song of Solomon today. So if, if you're a husband or a wife in the room, uh, hold your marriage, hold yourself up in your marriage to these lines and see how we're doing with this, Okay. Uh, Listen to these beautiful words. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is fierce as the grave. And by jealousy here is talking about devoted passion and zeal. It's a good kind of jealousy, like the jealousy of God. God is jealous for me. Are you jealous for each other? Fierce as the grave. His flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If a man offered for love all the wealth of his house, he would be utterly despised. Man, hold yourself up to those lines. How are we doing? Look, we all fall short. We all could do so much more and so much better. We hear God's word. Hopefully we believe God's word, but do we not just hear and believe or say we believe? So often where it falls short is in turning that belief into behavior because it takes work. It takes work, friends. It takes time and energy. It takes uh, committed, consistent, daily, intentional effort. It takes work and sometimes a lot of work, but it's worth it. It is so, so very, very worth it, friends. So worth it. In a a 20, 25-minute message up here, you know, obviously can't touch on all the topics of marriage, right? I mean, we could go all year on that. But it's just barely scratching the tip top of the surface when it comes to relationships and when it comes to marriage. My prayer, my hope is that in scratching the surface, Maybe it is what some of us need to take the next step or to begin to take the next step or think about the next step of of where the Lord is leading in your particular marriage or in whatever relationship that's on your mind right now. That's my prayer. If that's the case, if any of you are ready, if you feel the Lord leading you to to make a more uh, concerted investment, an intentional investment into your relationship, into your marriage, here's a few opportunities that are out there on the horizon, okay? So uh, make a mental note for the last weekend in September. This is uh, the Weekend to Remember Marriage Conference. It's going to be at Delray Beach. Uh, This is such solid Bible-based, Christ-centered teaching related to marriage. 
uh, hundreds of couples that be at the Opal Grand up there on the beach in Del Rey. Uh, my wife, Chris, and I, we've participated in this weekend and remember conference a number of times through the years and always are blessed uh, in doing so. We did it last year with Lauren and Makara and some others from Grace over at Fort Myers this year. Chris and I are looking forward to being with like hopefully dozens of couples from the church, preschool, community. Uh, we'd love for you to participate if you feel led. So uh, if you want more information, find me, find Lauren. Uh, we would love to get that in your hands. Be looking for promotion uh, information on that coming out soon. Also, if, you, if you're interested in maybe a workshop or a series of workshops related to marriage enrichment held here at the church, uh, or also maybe a small group of some sort, a connect group focused on marriage en- enrichment, Bible-based marriage enrichment, let me know. I'll gauge that interest and see where the Lord leads with that too. And then lastly, uh, you have probably heard us speak, if you've been here for a while, about the Better Man ministry. How many better men do we have in the room? Better, better men graduates, anybody? You can raise those hands high. All right, we got it. Okay, not as many as I thought would be in here in, here in the room. Uh, so, But there's about 40 or so that have been through Better Man over the past couple of years. Better Man, such solid teaching. And it's just what it says it is. It's The intent is to make better men. So uh, to make a, a man a better man. When, and when a man becomes a better man, what, what does that mean? A husband becomes a better husband. A dad becomes a better dad, and so on and so forth. So that's our prayer. Uh, they have already four or five spots that have been taken. So there's, that means probably four or five uh, left. They cap the group to keep the small group um, feeling. Uh, but Craig Watts, one of the Better Man leaders, is going to be at the door after the service. Would love to feel whatever questions you have. We also are going to have a video testimonial uh, from Jim Ulo, who's a preschool dad, church dad, and also a Better Man graduate. So uh, we'd love for, for you to, um, to be part of that if you feel so lit. Bottom line, what it all comes down to for all of us, men, women, husbands and wives, anybody, everybody who's here today or watching online today is that line from Psalm 101. I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. Be quick to listen, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, bridle the tongue, tame the tongue, be doers of the word and not merely hearers. I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. Don't just talk to talk, friends, with hypocrisy of heart in your house and outside of your house. Walk the walk. Actually, literally walk the walk because that's the dividing line, friends. You're not going to do it perfectly. But pray for God to help you do it better, to walk the walk of integrity with integrity of heart within your house and then whenever and wherever the Lord places and plants you. All right, let's go to God in prayer and then we'll watch this video. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the time together today. Thank you, God, for every person here. Thank you for those who are married. Thank you for those who are are not married, God. We're grateful for all the relationships that you grant us as a blessing, Lord. Uh, to, as we said, to think, to speak, to act, to live in a love outside and beyond ourselves, God. So bless us in relationships. There are people here, God, who are struggling in relationships who might be right at the brink of collapse. And so, Lord, as we said earlier, uh, we pray and trust that you are meeting us right where we are and that you're taking us where you intend for us to be. So speak into the hearts and lives, speak into the hope and speak into the hurt, God, wherever we are, wherever every person is today, I just pray that you will um, take us, every one of us, right where you intend for us to be. First and foremost, God, and first of all, most of all, and best of all, God, closer to your heart. And so uh, speak your truth into every uh, heart and every family, every home in this room. We ask and pray this in the name of Jesus, all and always for your glory. Amen. All right, let's turn our attention to the video. Good morning, Grace. Guys, would you be interested in an opportunity to meet with like-minded individuals that are looking to be the best versions of themselves as fathers, husbands, and professionals? That is exactly what Grace's Better Man Group offers to you. Hi, my name is Jim Ulo. My family and I are members of Grace, and about a year ago, I was offered the opportunity to join the Better Man Group. To say that Better Man exceeded my expectations would be an understatement. Ahead of the 12-week course, I knew being guided by the Word of God would bring value to me as a father, husband, friend, and a professional. And yes, the program delivered. But my favorite part about Better Man was what I didn't count on. The communion, the brotherhood, the learning from the group chats. It's facilitated by the great 
Craig Watts and Tom Best, these chats, they allowed us to get vulnerable, laugh together, and ultimately provide support in being better versions of ourselves with the benefits being felt in our families, workplaces, and communities. The program is transformative. The relationships built are awesome. I highly recommend Better Man for every man out there. And for more information and how to register, please go to www.gracebocca.org.
give them another round of applause. I think they deserve that. That was amazing. Good job, you guys. That was so awesome and incredible. We love our preschool families. We are so thankful that you guys are a part of Grace, and we welcome you each and every Sunday. We are so thankful for the preschool teachers as well. Can we please give a round of applause for the preschool teachers also? They do an amazing job as well. We are so thankful and blessed for that also. At this time, I'm gonna have everybody stand and invite you to worship.
amazing grace. We thank you online as well. We can't wait to see you next week. Don't forget about family movie night this coming Saturday. We can't wait to worship with you again. We love you so much. Have a wonderful week. We love you and God bless.